So let's have a quick look at the three types of analytics. And I'll quickly describe what they do. So the first one is segmentation. And segmentation means a lot of different things to different people. A definition is essentially finding clusters or groups of customers that essentially look the same. And there are dimensions, multiple dimensions, upon which you can segment. Many organizations will talk about segmentation, which is geodemographic in its nature. Age, gender, life stage, that sort of stuff, where they live, how many kids have they got, all of the information that you would typically capture about a customer. That is the demographic segmentation. That is what most organizations will do. And I imagine it's what you guys do as well. Behavioral segmentation is about analyzing the financial and transactional behaviors that you are seeing from your customers and using that on top of the geodemographic to enhance the segmentation, starting to get, use the data to actually really understand what is driving the customer behavior. And finally, and the hardest one to get, is this attitudinal or psychographic. What, what are customers actually really wanting to do? And most of the time, you're going to be able to get that through a qualitative measure. It's down into the customer focus groups. But then once you understand the different types of attitudes, attitudes to risk, attitudes to reward, that sort of stuff, then you can extrapolate that across the database. It's a more difficult art, but it's at the top level of segmentation. So segmentation enables you to do things like this. Let's take a very basic example. To drive a matrix of dimensions, maybe a behavioral recency frequency monetary value of the transactions, matched with a life stage. And to understand the clusters, the singles who are transacting high, couples transacting high, whatever it is. That's very interesting because the other segmentation that you can do is around profitability. If you're measuring profitability or lifetime value, then you can apply that to them. And if you overlay the two together, you can start to understand what types of people you have, how many you have of them, and which groups of customers you get most value from. Which suddenly starts to become the driver at the macro level as to your brand strategy, your channel strategy, and everything about what you're there to do. Because you know that if you attract more of these people, you're going to make the most money. So you or segmentation is used at a strategic level in order to orient your business to naturally attract a target audience like this. Good example from the UK, and I do apologise, we do both come from the UK, so the, the, there are some UK examples here, but it is a very good one, it's a very famous UK grocer. Um, they do something really good with segmentation, to the extent that they have about 12 different segments of their customers that they know, and what they do, they actually know them to the extent of giving them personalities and names. And they have people within their organization who becomes that customer. It's a role-playing thing in many respects. They become the advocate for that type of customer with descriptions about the sort of person that Miss Jones in this instance is. And there are 12 other Mr. and Mrs. within the portfolio. And they build a DNA of all of the things that attract or not attract that customer, the things that they want to do. They understand how many Miss Joneses they have. They understand, mainly through the loyalty card scheme that they have, the type of value and the type of shopping that they do and how, how often and how much money they make out of Miss Joneses. So that they can start to understand what they're doing in terms of marketing offers, but also in terms of the branding and TV efforts about how to attract more Miss Joneses if Miss Jones is the one that's giving them value. Another example, this is from the United States, it's um, a, uh, 
cruise line leisure sort of uh, industry. They use segmentation, slightly more simple, but they use segmentation first of all to identify four cruise ships and cruise holidays. First of all, differentiate between people who haven't travelled with them before, people who have, and people who are regular travellers. And then go into a secondary dimension that for the people who haven't travelled before, they bring in the geodemographic. They do that because they can buy that information in, and that's the only information they've got. So they will break that down into the typical types of geodemographic life stage customs that they have. But for the customers, as soon as they become a customer, as soon as they travel and do the cruise thing, they have information, they collect information about what they do on the cruise. And I don't know whether I, I don't know that much about the cruise line type of industry, but what I do know is that people who stay in their cabin all the way through the cruise and just have a happy time swimming around in the swimming pool don't earn the don't earn the company very much money at all. In fact, in a way they're the lost leaders. But the people who are going out, they're on the gambling tables and they're buying the excursions. Cruise companies make more money on excursions than probably anything else. So, so just bear that in mind next time you go on a cruise. Um, the top spenders, they can spot those. And they know how to attract those back. And they know that they want to attract those back. The low rate shoppers, these are the guys who will shop, but not very often, not very, very high frequency but at least they're better than the cabin dwellers. They've got a breakdown of who's driving value for them, and they know the sort of people. So they can start to build marketing offers and marketing contacts around that. And that's a segmentation. That's how segmentation helps them. So here's an example of the typical marketing offers and the things that they do here, where segmentation can operate in, in a geographical domain, in terms of where they live and how far they would want to travel in terms of the loyalty and, and the repeat purchasing patterns, but also in terms of making differentiated offers to the sorts of people that they are.